Hello and welcome to this late morning taste challenge. Uh, I already cut the grass, got it done fast. It, you know, it was straggly, but it wasn't thick like in July when it's on shag carpet. Uh, but um, the lawnmower, weed eater brand, runs remarkably well that I've stopped using ethanol spiked gasoline. That was destroying the product, destroying the, the, the lawnmower. I'm gonna to try to get three more years out of that mower, and then it'll have 20. And after 20 years, if I have to buy a new one, I don't mind really. But um, I think it was damaged by the ethanol gas. I think if I would have never put that in there, uh, I could get 25 easy. But that's another story, like the Grateful Dead said, another time, another place. Um, we have Bellows club whiskey and you'll notice this is a, like a mid 1990s Jim Beam bottle. I don't mean Jim Beam bourbon but a Beam bottle. It used to have this sort of a I don't know what you call it like an oil can old and I mean old like the Wizard of Oz movie <laughs> oil can neck and um, <laughs> probably was from the 30s they just had never updated it this is a liter bottle. I bought it at International Market for $6.99. I think they still have a bottle left, maybe more. To me, it looks like a housefly, but I guess it's supposed to be a honeybee, Bellows, William Bellows and Sons Company, uh, founded in 1830. Still around. The company hasn't been around probably since uh, Kaiser William was the emperor, the German emperor, but... Um, it changed hands over the years. It was a Beam brand, at least through the 90s, until actually until 2015, because in 2015, Beam Suntory sold it off to Luxco. Luxco. But this bottle is from 19, from, from my best determination, and I did a lot of, I put a lot of effort into it, but it's from 1994. So this is a 1994 bottle, to the best of my knowledge. Bottled in Claremont, Frankfort, Kentucky. That's Beam. Anytime you see Claremont in Frankfort, Kentucky, that's Jim Beam. Beam Suntory. Uh, Bellows Club Whiskey. I Like I said in previous videos, I have seen that at a local Chinese restaurant on U.S. Highway 61. They got it up in their bar, Bellows Club Whiskey. They probably use a shot of it every six months, and it'll probably last 10 more years. Um, <clears throat> paid $6.99 for the liter. There you go. Do they still make the club whiskey? This I don't know, but I wouldn't be shocked if they did. I know that the big brand was Bellows Club Bourbon. You can look on an internet search and everywhere you see left, right, forward, and behind Bellows Club Bourbon, Club Bourbon. Do they still make that? I don't know. There's certainly a Bellows Straight Bourbon Whiskey, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. I did a video this morning with it and I bought it recently with a brand new bottle, like a 2019 bottling at Savannah Discount on the West Bank, Mississippi River, Louisiana Highway 45 northbound in Marrero, Louisiana. Competitor, a brand that's very old itself, Old Thompson, introduced 1904. Check the trademark, true story. Old Thompson brand, American whiskey, a blend. And uh, it's got your typical American blend of whiskey right up, which makes it out to be much better than it actually is. The whiskeys in this finer, and I like how they spell whiskeys, E-Y-S, not I-E-S. The whiskeys in this finer tasting American blend were produced with extreme care by expertly skilled craftsmen before blending with finest quality neutral spirits. <laughs> but yet I bought it for $7.99 at Total Wine and Total Wine Total Wine and More. So expertly crafted, blended the greatest of care, but yet they can sell a liter for $7.99. Amazing, amazing ingenuity. <laughs> Bottled by Glenmore Distilleries of Owensboro, Kentucky and Bardstown, Kentucky. They're both 80-20 blends, meaning 80% grain spirits, unaged, clear, odorless, basically, basically, colorless grain spirits, uh, 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 invariably corn. What about Scotch whiskey blended? It's also probably about 80% or more, 80% 
uh, grain whiskey, they call it grain whiskey, which is generally odorless and colorless based on corn, column stilled. Canadian whiskey, same thing. Uh, in Scotland, however, there in Ireland, there's a difference. The grain alcohol has to be aged at least three years in oak barrels. In America, the United States of America, the grain alcohol does not have to be aged. It can be raw, unaged, and blended with aged straight whiskey. As long as the straight whiskey is 20 proof, uh, 20, <laughs> uh, get it right, 20%. Now, and, and the regulations do say straight whiskey, which would mean age at least two years. So that's how the regulation kicks in. So it has to be aged at least two years, the straight whiskeys. The 80% grain spirits can be, there's no regulation saying they don't, they can't be aged. But they just have to be stored in oak. But these things are being put out all day long. There's almost a continuous production of grain alcohol. It doesn't end. So 99.99% uh, chance it's not aged. It's probably filtered once and then boop, in the bottle. Let's look at some comments. So um, the principle is the same. American blended, Irish blended, Scotch and Canadian, and probably Japanese. But the, the although I think, and I read this, I know I read this on Toka, on the, uh, the uh, Suntory website, but they've updated their website and they don't make that reference anymore, that they were using rice as their grain base. I read it, I read it. I, I think I even put it in my, uh, my notes. I can find those notes. Because somebody was telling me, you're wrong. And I said, well, here's the uh, link. And then I didn't hear a comment back. So I'm wrong, huh? Okay. Uh, doesn't matter because it's grain neutral spirits, meaning it's neutral. It wouldn't matter if it's corn or rice base. The result, it would be the same. It's neutrality. Hey, Ronald, it's great to see you streaming live. Thank you, Kevin Johnston. Why is it, do you think they make all the strict rules and regulations amongst bourbon and whiskey? Well, <clears throat> I'm not a fan of regulations personally. I don't support government regulations. I would rather see a free enterprise approach like trade associations. But anyway, I'm me. The government is them. They're not interested in my opinions, obviously. I can live with that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the reasoning is that uh, there were problems in the past with uh, flim flam whiskeys, beer, wine, liquor, medicine, food in general, where they were selling whiskey, so-called, which was extremely questionable in quality and even in even questionable in safety. There was a safety question uh, that the whiskey was not even really fit for human consumption. And um, there was a big uproar around the turn of the century, probably overblown as usual, exaggerated. India today has that problem, may not be exaggerated there. Uh, you hear about these stories in India or East Africa, like Uganda, Tanzania, where people will have a party and some guy, a, a relative brings his own homemade whiskey and then 30 people at the party go blind or die because they're using, uh, you know, <laughs> wood alcohol or who knows what. I've seen Indian whiskey sold. I wouldn't buy it personally. There's too many American, Canadian, Irish, and Scotch to buy. And I don't need to be dealing with something that I hope for the best, well, I have to hope for the best. So the reason is to ensure quality, all right? And there's different regulations very uh, relative to different types. American blended whiskey, that was a, 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 a court case, so to speak. And then they settled on a compromise between different whiskey distillers. They say, well, <laughs> you can call it whiskey as long as it's at least 20% straight whiskey. It's blended with a grain neutral spirits. And the whiskey that you blend is straight whiskey aged at least two years and it has to be 80 proof bottled. That's it. You can add color in and you can add flavor in. The regulations aren't that strict. Bourbon whiskey is a little stricter, but it isn't particularly strict. Um, and that's the reason, so. 
That's it. So let's go on with the taste. I always thought before blending the base grain alcohol was called the wash. Craft beer tastic. Uh, could be. Uh, but you got to remember what they're doing is they're purchasing and Sazerac, who makes Old Thompson, told me that. They said, well, we just get our uh, grain spirits from MGP. Because they used to make their own vodka at a column still, and they showed it to me. It was all mothballed. I said, don't you get your grain spirits from uh, MGP across the river in uh, Indiana? And the tour guide said, yes, that's where we get it. Because that company is so huge, one of the biggest distilleries in the world, used to be owned by Seagram's until 20 years ago. And they just are past masters of producing any kind of base liquor. So it's for many companies, it's a lot cheaper just to buy the grain spirits from uh, MGP, Midwest Grain Products. They just send a, an order. We want this. And they have different grades, too, if you look at their website. Want this grade, grain spirits. Okay, well, got it. Send it. So in Old Thompson's case at Glenmore or uh, Bardstown, Kentucky, they're blending it with one of their straight bourbons, which would be something like Ancient Age or Barton 1792. But more than likely, it's very old Barton, something like that. They're not going to use an expensive whiskey, although they do have batches that don't come out right and they're not going to dump them. They blend them off. Okay. Uh, Heaven Hill does the same thing. They admitted on a video, a, lot, uh, a video recorded, still posted, that if their whiskeys come out wrong, they blend them into these things here and sell them cheap. And the guy even laughed when he said it. I say, hey, well, you said it. Can't get out of it now. But I mean, I guess everybody knew that. Now, the, what's the premier American blend of whiskey? I think the premier is the uh, Seagram 7 crown. Even though Seagram's as a company is gone, the brand exists today under Diageo's umbrella. You won't get it for the prices I got these because it's a much higher quality product. <clears throat> uh, so maybe with things like food and beverages, it's good to have some form of government regulation. Well, you're saying maybe I, th I would disagree because I think trade associations could do that. And then you could just... As a consumer, say, well, I'm not going to buy it if it's not approved by whatever, whatever trade association. And if it wasn't approved, then you could take the risk and uh, buyer beware. Even if it was dangerous, the company would open themselves up to a tort, a uh, 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 you know, lawsuit. But uh, <laughs> or if they were using products they they that weren't what they claimed, that would be fraud. But uh, a lot of people f don't understand how trade associations work, so they just default to the government, which I wouldn't ne necessarily agree with. It. I don't agree with that. But anyway, that's the that's what we have. Okay, Julie Julie Gulpin says, "Hey, Gulpin, <laughs> Gulpin says, hey there, Ron. Cheers, cheers back to you, Julie. You must have been a great teacher. You are very good at breaking things down. Oh, thank you. Well, most students thought I was good. They even tell me when I see them, oh, you were my favorite teacher, whatever. Now I had some that hated me." Usually because they wanted high grades, but they wanted to put in low level work. You know, the, you know the type. I want an A, but I want to do C minus work. And I would say, no. You know, or they would say, you're picking on me. I say, why do you say that? Well, I made a D on, you gave, they would never say I made a D. You understand? You gave me a D. I said, I didn't give you a D. That's what it scored up to. Got, look how many you got wrong. <sighs> The other one made 100. I said, how come you didn't accuse me of giving you an A plus when you made an A plus? You, you said, I, you know, the students would say, look what I made, an A plus. And we talked about it, that in psychology class. If they made an F, the teacher gave them an F. If they made an A, they earned it. And the students would laugh because they knew that was true. Okay. Uh, back in the day... In the old days, during a tour of Dogfish Head Brewery, Sam Calgioni said they were unhappy with an entire batch of 120-minute IPA, so they dumped it. Oh, they dumped it out. Well, you see, beer has a very poor shelf life, generally. But did they really dump it, or did they sell it? <laughs> what do they mean by dump? <laughs> you know, you, gotta, you might have wanted to press him on that. Good point. I agree with that about government regulations. I want a smaller government. Right. Well, you're about to not get it. All right. So when a when a distillery tell when a brewery tells me they dumped their beer, I would ask, I would press them on that. I would say, 
When you say dump, you mean you dumped it down the drain or did you sell it off? If they were reluctant to answer that question, then you'd have your answer. If they said, well, we don't discuss those type of issues, then you'd say, you could say to yourself, they sold it. The stilling companies will be a little more open about it, but they simply either blend it off with grain spirits or they sell it off in an auction, sort of like uh, used cars. Uh, it's sort of like a ladder, right? So you say, well, I don't have money. I'm very, I have very poor income streams. I'm in debt. I can barely make it month to month. Okay, well, then you buy Old Thompson. Seven ninety nine dollars a liter. You say, well, that's all I can afford. Okay, that's why it exists. How many video reviews do you see for Old Thompson? You got it. I checked. I'll check again. There might be two or three uh, if they have any. I, I forgot to recheck. But if, but it won't be many. Uh, how many times have I seen this brand? I've seen it once at old at at, at Total Wine. I know they have it in New England because Eric Fraunfelter and them bought him and his friend Nate K, who used to join us. He got married and got busy. You know how that works, and so he didn't join. But um, they went and bought a bottle of Old Thompson because we were doing a blended whiskey examination, and they said. We don't want to pay a lot. I'll say, I'll find you the cheapest one I can look, locate. And I looked on this internet searches through distributors. I said, there, it's at this place on this highway. And it's like, I don't know, it's 99 a bottle. Eric said, I know where that is. Or Nate, I know where that is. So they went and rushed over there and got a bottle and they uh, presented it on our hangout. And uh, they said, yeah, it wasn't too bad. They probably never touched it again. The bottle's still probably 99% full. <laughs> uh, you know. But um, let's get on with this. Old Thompson is an actual brand. It was started by two brothers, Thompson Brothers, at Glenmore Distillery. Glenmore was started by the Thompson family. It was a real distillery. It was a real brand. It was real straight bourbon, real blended bourbon, real uh, other stuff. And uh, they did get bought out. Glenmore, and now Sazerac owns it. The Glenmore Distillery is still around. It's a big um, employer in Owensboro, Kentucky. They blend and bottle whiskey over there. And I was looking at some photos of their huge uh, uh, aging, you know, their barrel house <coughs> with tens of thousands of barrels. And they, um, there was a company that did the renovations and they were so proud of it. If you look on uh, Google or whatever, they were saying, um, saying, uh, well, Glenmore, meaning Sazerac, wanted to tear it down, demolish it. It was from like the 1870s. I mean, it was like that old. It was like an incredibly old building. But they, this company said, we went in there and inspected it and we presented them with some kind of bid that we could renovate it. We could put a new roof. It could be built, it could be done. It was actually cheaper than building a new one. They, that was their contention at least. And so uh, they showed a step-by-step -step photo expose of how they started tearing the roof apart, rebuilding it, putting modern shingles, repairing the floor damage, the rot, weather-beaten parts. And then, uh, then they were saying, look at it now, man. 20, 2018, <laughs> I think they finished. It's sparkling new. and. Then there's another company from like last year or whatever. They went and redid the uh, rectifying plant, you know, the blending plant and the bottling plant at Glenmore. And then they were showing how they just went in there with state of the art equipment. They just brought it down to the to the um, to the frame and they just rebuilt it. And they were saying this thing here is so great now. And um I'm going to post some photos of that on Alcohol Legs. That's my Facebook group, Alcohol Legs. I've been doing Cruzan distillery photos. but um, So they put a lot of effort. Now, um, Luxco, I don't know much about them. They do have a bottling plant in St. Louis. They do have a distillery that they built in Kentucky for their bourbon. So, uh, But uh, mostly I think Luxco, which is family owned, just like Sazerac, I think most of Luxco is uh, sourced. Like most of their product, they just buy from other companies. 
and blend it or don't even blend it, just bottle it, whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. If it tastes good, what difference does it make? Why do you think Louisiana specifically, you mean specifically, why do you think Louisiana specifically where you live is such cheap liquor prices? I don't know. It's strange. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I have some theories. A uh, good point. I agree with. Okay. I want to have a smaller government. Uh, how much is Seagram's whiskey there? It says tip. It usually runs about $19.99 a, a handle. And different stores will have sales. Could get an eight. You might, I doubt it, you might find it $18.99. You know, the big handle, 1,750 milliliter bottles. But it's always, somebody's always got a sale. Always. And then you can check around and about three times a year, they'll come out with those coupons. Those little, it'll be hanging on around the neck of the bottle on a, a little elastic, elastic string. Check that and you can mail it in or mail in rebate and you can, you can really save. Yes, yeah, specifically. Voice to chat is not effective. Yeah, I've noticed that. Have you ever had Prestige? You talking about the beer from Haiti? Currently being made in uh, Holland? Yes, I've had it. I liked it. I noticed Red Stripe. I saw some cans, fresh new cans, new design too, a Red Stripe this morning. I said, Red Stripe? Hadn't seen cans in years. It said made in Holland, the Netherlands. I said, oh, look at y'all. Those little, those little hucksters. They were selling it from Pennsylvania for a long time. And it was nasty. Then they went back to uh, Jamaica. And now all of a sudden there's red stripe imported lager from Holland. I said, you guys, I should have bought a can just to try it. What would it taste like? I don't know. Probably about the same, but maybe inferior. I'm not driving two and a half miles to go find out, though. I'm there. I went there. I came back. And I'm back, and I ain't going back. You ever? Oh yeah, whiskey. Oh, prestige whiskey. I never heard of it. No. Okay. So on with the taste challenge. Theory to fact. My theory. Oh, and talking about teaching, I did try to explain things to students well because I wanted them to know the. I wanted them to have a good understanding of history, geography, government, whatever. So they had to take state tests. They're called end of course. That's the best way to evaluate teachers, end of course exam, because, well, it's a good way. It's not a perfect way because there could be some other variables. But, um, but it's a very pretty good indicator. And they would tell us at the beginning of the year, here's the things you need to cover. They'll give you 52 points because they'll be on the exam. Other teachers would be just like fretting, like pulling their hair out. How can I do all this? You know, like in a panic. I said, well, just work backwards. Just say, here's what I got to cover and then work back to where your starting point is and then cover it all. I would always cover it, all of it. But then most of it was stuff you would cover anyway, like uh, list and discuss various causes of the Second World War. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you be talking about that anyway, right? Or uh, uh, describe a map of Europe pointing out territorial changes uh, in, the, in, in the interwar years, 1919 to 1939. I mean, I say, well... That's in the book. We do that. I don't know why. And so we would cover all these things. And then when the students would take the exam, they would come and tell me like at lunch, that was your class. I said, what do you mean? The exam we took that, it was the same as your class. And they would always pass it. And then the principal would say, you know, I'm like almost all your students passed. Like proficient or at least acceptable. I said, well, the exam is not hard. And of course, exam is just asking you, what is the basic? You know, there's not, you don't have to make an A on it. There is no such grade. You just have to make the minimum score, which is the worst student in Louisiana in history class should at least know this stuff. And then if you can't pass it, you don't know anything. You know what I'm saying? You think uh, Argentina invaded uh, France in World War II. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know anything. 
Isn't Heineken brewed in Holland? Yes, Heineken owns Red Stripe. Are bars cheap also in New Orleans? No, they're not. So that's the trade-off. The bars are expensive. So if you go out, you'll have a good time more than likely, and you're going to pay, 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 pay. You drink at home, you can get them cheap. So $7.99 for Old Thompson, liter bottle. International market, $6.99 for Bellows Club Whiskey. Incredible, right? Till you taste it. All right. I don't think it's going to be much of a challenge. I'm about to end it. It's going to be ended because the Bellows has a very unfavorable taste. As I've learned now, when I first tried it, I liked it. And the more I drink it, the less I liked it. Some of these products are like that. <laughs> they get better every time you drink it. Or they're, or they're like Jack Daniels and they never change. Like Jack Daniels, it, it's you taste it once and then the 30th time it's the same, which is probably a good sign. It's like always the same. It doesn't get better. It just doesn't get worse. It just doesn't change. And then there's some that get a little worse every time. Dickel is a good example. When I first tried George Dickel's Superior Recipe 12, I really liked it. I was bragging on it. But uh, over time, as I did more and more taste challenges, I think the score... Was going down. When I tried it this morning, I just said, there's so much of a preponderance. There's a preponderance of Flintstones vitamins. And I don't see that as a good sign. I don't think anybody ever designed their whiskey to taste like Flintstone vitamins. But it's, it's unmistakable. You can't miss it. Now, the Bellows has a harsh peppery note. You say, well, peppery, that's good. Not in this case. Not in this case. It's peppery, bitey, and unpleasant. To me, you might like it. I don't like it. Here we go. Appearance, same. Yeah, same. You know what? A lower level of tan, light tan. Are they colored? Perhaps, probably. They're aged at least four years, but they... They had barrels, could be 100 years old. They're not going to get much color off those old used-up barrels. I don't think. You think vodka has a different effect than whiskey? Uh, I probably Maybe. I don't know. I don't drink enough vodka. To know. I know some people drink vodka and they get done out. I know some of these people, if they drink vodka, watch out. They all say the most outrageous things, and their behavior will be bad. But then they might do that with whiskey. I don't know. Uh, typical American blend of whiskey. What is the, t what do you mean typical? Pecan shell. A lot of grain, corn, out, corn whiskey, like corn. It's just corn. It's, it's neutral in a way. No, well, it's called neutral spirits. But a lot of pecan shell, nut oil. Um... You can go to these grocery stores and buy pecan oil, true story, almond oil. Uh, I've never cooked with it. Well, you know, peanut oil, that's a nut. Well, it's really not a nut, isn't it? Is it? It's a legume. But um, uh, we can buy these things. Oh, more sourdough bagel. So is the straight whiskey in this a sourdough, a sour mash whiskey? Probably it is, and it's. But I don't think Jim. I don't think Jim Beam is sour mash. It can't be Evan Williams. That's Heaven Hill. I don't know. It's strange. But I don't know. There's something funny about this, and that funniness is not com comedic. I don't mean like Richard Pryor funny. I don't mean like Gary Shandling funny. I mean funny like strange, like Bellows Club whiskey. Thank you. Let's go with this taste. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you and good night. All right, let's go with the taste. Good morning. <clears throat> I think it's Old Thompson. Why? It's just straight corn, a touch of straight bourbon like an ancient age, Everything is just like straight and narrow. And that's how Sazerac products are. They're just like straight line. They're bland and they're dull and they're unremarkable. 
but they 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 have like more like an even plain flavor. It's just like you took straight bourbon and you watered it down, but you didn't really water it down because you're blending it with 80 proof grain spirits. But the grain spirits are, are neutral in the flavor, so that's why it tastes watered down, but it isn't. That could be the danger. I know some people that prefer blended whiskey over bourbon. One man just died. God rest his soul. But he, uh, if he was drinking at bingo, he'd say, give me a... Uh, he said, give me a, what did he say? Give me a um, Pepsi Cola. I think it was Pepsi and uh, a Canadian, whatever. He said, whatever Canadian blended whiskey to have. He said, I prefer the Canadian blends. Well, that's what he preferred, okay? Something about bourbon, he didn't like it. Put him off. Probably the heavy charcoal. He didn't like it. it. says, purview, you have a right to not drink whatever you don't want to drink. So, uh, and he enjoyed, he enjoyed it. It'd usually be Crown Royal, but uh, they didn't always have Crown Royal. Sometimes they'd have Canadian Mist or, um, I don't know, Canadian Club. And but he never cared. Just put it in there with the Pepsi and he drank it. But bourbon, he didn't want it. He drank the bourbon. He would drink it. All right. But he didn't want it. Do some people choose American blended? Obviously, go to any liquor store. You'll see a lot of it. It isn't celebrated, but it exists and it sells and it has its place. And of course, the king is Seagram Seven Crown, seven and seven. That's their calling card. Seagram Seven and Seven Up. They put ads at least once a month on Facebook about that. I've never had that combination, so I couldn't testify to it. But uh, I've talked to so many people that said, well, who hadn't heard of that? And um, they usually will say something like, man, back in the 70s. And then they'll tell the story. It always starts, man, back in the 70s, comma, and then the story. But amazingly, Seagram Seven Crown is still going strong. And in fact, it's one of the top selling whiskeys of any sort, any sort in America. Blended, straight bourbon, uh, uh, anything. Look it up. Check it out. And, and I'm not Archie Bunker where he was his argument. I mean, look on um, Statista and these other sites. Um, Seagram Seven Crown is still in the top. I think it's in the top five. But that's we're not drinking it right now. Um, are there any redeeming qualities for these? Yes. They have a nutty, nutty nut oil flavor. One good, one good thing about them is they're not so heavy corn, 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 corn. I was just becoming despondent over all the corn, with all the bourbons I was drinking the last two weeks. Bourbon, corn. It was like every day I, I, I had to experience these grits. So something about the neutrality of it, it kind of softens it, which you may or may not appreciate, depending on your, um, if you're used to drinking Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, I'm pretty sure you're not going to like this. Funny thing, the Bellows Club Whiskey, which was a quasi-atrocity, is not coming across as an atrocity today. DJ Video Scratch Channel says, hello, hello to you. I grew up seeing people mix their Seagram's Whiskey with Coca-Cola. Happens every day of the year, even now, Crown Royal is good. You know, people, a million people at an hour mix Crown Royal and Coke, believe me. And a half a million mix Seagram's Seven Crown and Coke. We still get reruns of All in the Family here on the TV, hard to believe in the current cancel culture, craft beer tastic. Right. Yeah, they'll say stuff like, uh, well, this is an example of how you shouldn't be. The funny, ironic thing about All in the Family was that was produced for that express reason to, to, to make people appalled and say, I never want to be like that. But it had a reverse effect where people watched All in the Family and Norman Lear couldn't believe it. They were saying, right on, Archie. That's the way I think. And he's like, no, no, you're not supposed to like this. You're supposed to hate this thinking. <laughs> he might have helped Nixon get reelected by putting that on there. On there. All right. Um, let's 
Well, I'm afraid this is the bellows, but I'm, I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased this morning because I was dreading it, actually. I thought, oh, it's just going to be awful again, but it isn't. These are both creamy, creamy, true story, and smooth. So, but like I say, if you take whiskey A and put it against whiskey B, C, D, E, and F, it's going to be different each time. Against B, C, D, E, and F, it, it won't taste the same, and I can't explain that, but I can surely testify that that's been my experience. So which one is better here? Oh, it's a draw, really. Um, I'd call it even. And so who wins? Obviously, the uh, I never thought I'd say this, but the Bellows Club Whiskey wins by virtue of being a dollar cheaper per liter. So <laughs> the worst looking labels, these things are the dullest thing. I was saying that this morning, Bellows, what do they think? Like, let's make this the most drab, dreary, and depressing label ever. And people run out to buy it. No, they don't run out to buy it, but they do buy it. Um, if you're looking for flash, you know, you're looking for uh, champagne, cheese, flash. This ain't the thing. These, these blended whiskey got the drabest looking labels you ever saw. Except for Se Seeker and Seven Crown has spruced up their game a little bit lately. But uh, most of these things have the most, the most, I guess, off-putting labels because they're so drab. It's like uh, my grandmother used to say that. I like everything to be gray. She would want a gray car, a gray house, gray interior, gray. I said, why would you want that? Because then it's plain. I say, oh, all right. But maybe you say, well, there's uh, 10 million grandmothers in America that want whiskey labels that are drab, drab, drab. Okay, I get it. Oh, oh, oh. I, it just hit me. I'm glad I took a big swig of it. That's the club whiskey. There is no way on this in this world or the next that this is not the club whiskey because I mean, none of them have that peppermint spice, which to me, I don't like, but you might like it. That peppermint spice approach. Whew. Well, that, that clenched it there. There's no way when I look, it's going to say OT. OT would be old Thompson. So that's it. It's the club whiskey. No way it's old Thompson. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. If you could have heard the man just two days ago, if you could have heard him, man, you're going to call him crazy. Um, no, that broke the bank right there. So that last swig, that broke the bank. So if you're looking for a unusually pepperminty flavored American blended whiskey, which is beyond the pale of any expected flavor and aroma presentation, then Bellows Club Whiskey might just be the one for you. And for $6.99 a liter, even if it's bad, it ain't bad because you can mix it. You can mix it with Delaware Punch and be off to the races. But um, Old Thompson, no minty peppermint black pepper thing. It's just simple pecan shell nut oil basic. What does it taste like? Well, whiskey. <laughs> now, some people say it's nothing but flavored vodka. Um, there's a problem with that contention because vodka is made from grain spirits like gin. But vodka, you see, they will distill it up seven times. Like if you get platinum, it's seven times distilled. They just keep distilling it and distilling it and distilling it and distilling it. And then they'll filter, 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 filter. So vodka would be ultra clean compared to these grain spirits. These grain spirits in this are just pretty rough. I'm sure they're only distilled and filtered once. They're not exact, you know, they're not going to be out there trying to uh, make the cleanest, flintiest thing. I mean, because they don't need to. So um, it is not the same as flavored vodka. It is not, as they say, brown vodka. It's based on some, some of those principles, yes, 
but according to the government of the United States of America, it is a type of whiskey known as blended whiskey or whiskey, comma, a blend. And that's been the law for over 100 years. Would I rec recommend the Glenmore, the uh, Old Thompson? Actually, I would. But, you know, I mean, $7.99 a liter. I wouldn't pay $10.99. But for what it is, a very basic base model, like a Nissan Sentra SE or a Toyota Corolla base model, something like that, it's serviceable. And I think there's, there's a place for serviceable. So uh, don't get overly excited. Uh, just take it within a certain context. It's a tie, but yet Bellows wins because I got it for a dollar cheaper. Mileage may vary, as people like to say on the internet. Um, in your town, the Bellows might be a dollar more. They might be the same price. But there's, there's a little wiggle room, but the wiggling is minimal. Um, let's just say in a, in a practical sense, it's, it's a draw. It's even. But in my case, in my particular case, in my particular case, the Bellows wins, Bellows Club Whiskey wins by virtue of the price per liter. But in a general sense, um, yeah, I don't think there's much difference. So if you see both of these on the shelf and one is one is a penny cheaper, go with the penny cheaper and save a penny. And I don't think you're going to come out any worse for wear. So, um, well, that was a lot more... Um, complicated than I had expected. That's why the video was longer because um, I thought it was going to be just clear cut. I thought it was going to be Thompson, decently good, and Bellows, horrendous, and it didn't turn out to be that. So uh, it's got me even more interested in the Bellows blended whiskey coming up next. Not club whiskey, just Bellows, different story. We'll get to that. Uh, so um, now... Now, I think it's going to be extremely difficult. And I mean extremely difficult. I may not get it right until Seagram 7 Crown. So you could look for 10 straight failures. And I, I believe that could happen. I doubt it. But uh, Okay. I never like whiskey mixed drinks. I never drink them. So I, I can't say I dislike them. I never had them. Uh, God, except one time I had an old fashioned because my mother used to, and my mother and my, her father, my grandfather used to drink those. And I figured, what is an old fashioned like? So I had someone make one for me at uh, Yeo College Inn. And I thought, well, that's good. I mean, I would never buy it again, but it was good. Uh, got here late. I'll have to watch the replay. Cheers, everyone, says Daryl Macias. Oh, thank you, Daryl. Uh, I tried Bombay Gin once and tastes like hairspray. Yeah, hairspray is... I'll tell you what, I, I don't review gins. I was very tempted to buy Miles's gin. Miles. And in fact, it's an old brand. And always in a glass bottle. They don't play with plastic except for the huge handle. But it's glass. Even the little tiny miles be glass. But I said, nah. Gin is bad for me. I, uh, if I start tasting gin, I'll be putting stuff on Facebook and I'll be like, why did I write that? You know, so, uh, and I, I don't really like it anyway. So, um, Bombay gin, yes. Uh huh heard about it. And then there's the Bombay Sapphire. There's more than one. Do you plan on reviewing a tequila? Uh, yeah, in 2045. So check with me in uh, 25 years. And I'm not being cheeky. Uh, that it, That's literally how long it's going to take to get to tequila. Do you plan on reviewing a tequila? In, okay. Uh, I don't prefer juniper. Juniper, I don't mind at all, but um, I just, uh, I'll just stick with whiskey, rum, uh, brandy. That's enough. That's enough. Whiskey, rum, brandy, whiskey, rum, brandy. I mean, I don't need to, I, I did find out one thing, y'all, Montezuma. I see this everywhere around here. Montezuma tequila, gold and white. And then there's a uh, overproof, you know, like 151. And, a, and other, there's a blue that's called uh, tequila. Moctezuma, blue, blue, heavy agave. I said, I don't know anything about this. But it's been around for decades. I said, why do people buy that? 
I did my research. Turns out Moctezuma is one of the top 10, I think it's like number five, top 10 selling tequilas in America. And you might scratch your eyes out and say, Moctezuma, only the worst alcoholics drink it. Well, there must be a lot of worse alcoholics around because I see Moctezuma coming in everywhere you turn, left, right, forward, and behind. Hey, I never tried it. I don't know anything about tequila, but everywhere I go, everywhere I go, they got Moctezuma. Somebody's drinking it. They ain't buying it again and again if they hate it. Rye is turning out to be my favorite liqueur. Liquor, well, that and rum, says Kevin. Yes, I agree. I like rye much more than bourbon or blended whiskey. Rye whiskey is my, my thing. And rum, yes, I, I don't get tired of rum. I used to like whiskey the best, but now I like beer. Well, I like beer, of course. I did a review this morning of a pumpkinator, bourbon barrel aged with cocoa nibs. Great product. Yeah, I love beer as well. I'm one of those weirdos that actually enjoys the ice beers. <laughs> I'm a weirdo too, like that. Okay, well, that's long enough. We don't need to be going on and on, but it is interesting to cover these things. So um, I, I'm a bit shocked here because I, I thought uh, this was going to be a 20-minute video. I said, well, this will be so – oh, you're welcome, Kevin. I said this will be a clear-cut thing, like as clear-cut as it's ever been. And I thought Old Thompson would rip – apart the uh, club whiskey, not to say that Old Thompson is anything to be looking for, but uh, the results were much different than I had expected. So that makes it even more interesting for, for what's coming up. Um, Canadian whiskey blended. No, <coughs> no, you can get some single malt Canadian whiskey you can get straight Canadian whiskey and all of that. But uh, generally, the great majority, the great majority, you know, probably 95% or higher is blended, yes. But it's not all, not all, no, no, no. But uh, you better get some money together because you're going to pay if you're going to get the non-blended. But I've, I've had very good experience with Canadian blended whiskey, actually. Very good, very good experiences. And I've got an exciting one coming up in about... Mm, about two and a half weeks. All right. So that's it. Thanks for watching this uh, elongated, like DC Comics, the elongated man video production. I'm going to end this by saying, y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana. Laissez-le bon temps relay.